a lot of different ways to do it. Many investors prefer exchange-traded funds. Joining us from Austin, Texas, to help us sort through all the choices in that category is Weiss Research ETF expert Ron Rowland. Ron, what is the simplest way to hop on the gold bandwagon using ETFs? Well, Jamie, when most people think about buying gold, they think about bullion. The first and still the biggest ETF that gives investors access to bullion is the Spider Gold Shares Fund, ticker symbol GLD. Uh, of course, there are similar ETFs that closely track the daily changes in gold prices, but GLD is backed by the most physical gold. Ron, some people may still doubt that the gold is really there, or they just don't like an intermediary coming between them and their bullion. What would you recommend for those types of investors? In that case, I would tell them just to buy their own gold coins or bars and store them in a place they think will be safe. But if they're just uncomfortable with the gold being stored in New York or London, the ETFS Physical Swiss Gold Shares Fund may offer a solution. SGOL works very much like other gold ETFs, except the gold is stored in bank vaults in Switzerland. Uh, this fund has attracted about $500 million in less than a year, uh, and it does a very decent trading volume. But Ron, bullion isn't the only way to invest in gold, of course. Let's talk mining stocks. Yeah, gold mining companies usually benefit from a bull market in gold prices because their operating costs are largely fixed. But you have to keep in mind that these are still stocks. They respond not only to the gold market, but to the stock market as well. Uh, so when a stock enters a downtrend, gold stocks often follow right along with them. Uh, if you're okay with that possibility, there's a couple ETFs that focus purely on gold mining stocks. Uh, one is the Market Vectors Gold Miners Fund. It owns all the major large cap gold stocks such as Barrick Gold and Gold Corp. Uh, Market Vectors also has a Junior Gold Miners Fund, similar to its big brother, but it focuses on small cap companies. Okay, Ron, let's say that I'm sold on a continued rise in gold prices and I want to make a big bet on that. Are there any more aggressive plays out there in the ETF market? Well, there's ETFs that offer leveraged exposure to gold. But leverage is a double-edged sword. It may give you magnifying gains on the upside, but there's also the risk of magnifying losses on the downside. In addition, you need to realize that the leverage on these funds resets daily, so long-term performance may not be an exact multiple of the gold prices. Uh, but if you understand how the leverage works and you're prepared to manage the risk, I'll give you a name to consider, and that's PowerShares DB Gold Double Long. It's an exchange-traded note that gives you 200% exposure to the daily moves in gold and gold futures. If you bought this fund a year ago, you'd have over a 50% return on your investment. Wow. All right. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Now, this week, we have told you how to invest in gold using bullion, mining stocks, mutual funds, and ETFs. But in order to understand how the commodities markets move, you have to understand their relationship to currencies. And here to help us do just that is Weiss Research currency expert Brian Rich. Hello, Brian. Hey, Jamie. Brian, normally gold and the U.S. dollar, they move inversely to one another, but that has not been happening recently. Why is that? Right. Well, Jamie, gold is normally viewed as an alternative currency to the dollar, the world's reserve currency. In typical times, as the dollar goes up, gold tends to go down and vice versa. But these aren't typical times, as we know. Uh, so we're, we're in the middle of this global economic crisis, and, and people are looking for safety anywhere they can find it. Uh, right now, both gold and the dollar offer this relative safety. Uh, the safety of gold is a hard asset, and the safety and liquidity uh, of the dollar in the U.S. Treasury market. So that's why you're seeing this unusual trend uh, of the dollar and gold moving higher together. Also, Brian, I think that these days that normal inverse trade between gold and paper currencies is happening with the euro, right? Right. There, there's definitely a fear out there about paper currencies in general, uh, and the euro is at the center of that fear. Uh, so over the past few months, we've seen that inverse relationship most clearly expressed in the euro-gold trade, uh, as people have been selling euros and buying gold. Uh, we're also seeing it in the pound and the yen, uh, these currencies that investors perceive to have the most exposure to the sovereign debt crisis. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, there are currencies that have a direct relationship to gold prices, right? Right. The, the currencies of the largest gold-producing countries, like in uh, South Africa, Australia, 
but we haven't actually seen uh, these currencies get the full benefit of the gold bull market yet uh, because everyone's so afraid of the sovereign debt crisis and, and the collateral damage it can have on these types of countries. Uh, so they're still favoring the U.S. dollar, and since we generally look at currencies against the dollar, every other currency looks bad by comparison. Brian, do you think that those currencies will eventually get the full benefit of a, of a gold bull market? I do. I think uh, it may take a couple of years, but we'll eventually get past this fear and crisis phase in the, in the global economy. And when investors start sifting through the wreckage, they'll realize that a country like Australia didn't have the massive policy response to the global financial crisis that many countries did. Right now, uh, the Australian dollar remains vulnerable to another uh, downturn in the global economy and, and potentially a slowdown in China. But if you bide your time uh, and wait for a pullback in the Australian dollar, it could be a very interesting investment, uh, especially if gold continues to move higher. And the same goes for uh, the South African rand and possibly the Canadian dollar as well. Okay, Brian Rich, thanks for being here. Thank you. That's it for this edition of Money and Markets, but we want to hear from you. If you have questions or comments about this week's show or suggestions for topics that you'd like us to cover, just email us at weissmoneynetwork at weissinc.com. Coming up next week, we're going to take a look at the July stock market rally. Does it signal a turnaround in the U.S. economy, or is it just window dressing? We'll address those questions and give you our stock market outlook for the rest of the year. I'm Jamie Holmes, and now, Mike Larson. Thank you, Jamie. Last week at this time, I told you that another recession was unavoidable, and I argued that our government shouldn't even try to stop it. Folks, failing companies should be allowed to fail. Yes, it would make for a difficult couple of years, but we'd eventually be able to make a full, healthy recovery. Unfortunately, that solution is politically untenable in Washington. Instead, I believe what we're going to get from our government is more bank bailouts, more stimulus spending, higher debt and deficits, and as a result, an economy that bounces along the bottom for years. Now, in that kind of environment, there aren't many investments that will make you money. Many won't even hold their value. But one that will do both is gold. As Larry Edelson told you, physical gold has been considered the safest investment for thousands of years. And really, not much has changed. When confidence in paper currencies is collapsing, and when stock markets are fluctuating wildly, gold is your absolute best bet. Remember, you don't have to suffer along with everyone else. If you take our advice, you'll not only protect your money, you'll also come out on top. I'm Mike Larson. We'll see you next week.